whenever you are. Well, welcome back, guys. Today we're here with Debbie, and um, we're just going to she's going to read another narrative, mm -hmm. and then we're going to enter into to today. Mm -hmm. So I'm reading John chapter 13, 1 to 20. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, mm -hmm. drying them with the towel that, he, that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said, Not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, <clears throat> excuse me, now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set an set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. I am not referring to all of you. I know those who I have chosen. But this is to fulfill the passage of Scripture. He who shared my bread has turned against me. I am telling you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. I Very truly, I tell you, whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me, and whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. Thank you, Debbie. I think we're just going to dive right in, mm -hmm. and we'll start with um, what character did you choose? Which one resonated with you? Well, both Peter and Jesus, but... After talking with God, it was more so Peter. Peter, okay. <laughs> and, and during this narrative of Jesus washing the feet of the disciples, what posture do you think Peter had towards Jesus? I think one of confusion. Okay. Because um, Jesus was always their teacher, their master, mm -hmm. and here he was taking on a slowly, uh, lowly slave's position that right. was unthinkable. Yeah, so the roles were kind of being reversed, and he's mm -hmm. like, what is going on here? Yeah, yeah so one yeah. of confusion. So he's still close to Jesus, but mm -hmm. he's a bit bewildered. Yes. Okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so sure. uh, what lies do you think that Peter is believing about Jesus in this moment? What maybe he's not quite understanding about who Jesus is. That uh, Maybe that uh, Jesus was... Um, Maybe not who he said he was right at that moment, because mm. why would someone who claims to be the king of the world mm. be doing... Washing my feet. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's not the picture culturally they would have about kings. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What truths do you think? Do, anything do you think Peter was right on the mark with? Um, I think um, when he realized what Jesus was doing, mm. then he re knew that Jesus was speaking the truth to him. Okay, so it started out with bewilderment, but mm -hmm. as the night progressed, he started to understand the meaning behind mm -hmm. it a little bit yeah. more. Yeah. Okay. Um, and what do you think was um, Peter's wilderness then in this moment of of this humil almost hum humility mm -hmm. moment of my master is washing my feet? I think he came to the realization that he also needed to be humble. 
Mm. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, as as his mass, if his master could humble himself and and mm. do this, that maybe this is something that I need to learn from this. Yeah. And that's what Jesus said, you know, yep. as I wash yep. your feet, you need to wash others' feet. And that exactly. would be a wilderness yeah. to yeah. to be humble towards people that are more prickly or different <laughs> or, than you. <laughs> <Yes>. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you think that, uh, what, what new way of living was Jesus offering to Peter in this that he, was very different? He was offering him a life of servanthood. Mm. and teaching them because he had been with them, teaching them to be leaders, to be healers, and now mm. to be a servant to one another and to other people. Which is totally upside down. Mm. Yes, yeah. Okay, we're going to switch to Jesus now. Mm -hmm. And um, within this um, narrative of, of he, wash his, him washing the feet of the disciples, mm -hmm. what was Jesus' um, maybe wilderness or maybe where he was trying to was being misunderstood. I was really putting myself into this while trying to understand what Jesus might be thinking at that mm -hmm. time and just thinking that maybe, you know, I have to do my Father's will. I know this is what I must do. And yet I love these people so mm -hmm. much that this is what I also want to do. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, just his love for his, his brothers yeah, and maybe yeah. that tension, like you say, mm -hmm. of he's he's fixed his eyes on, on mm -hmm. the cross. Yes. But in this moment of he's almost humanity mm -hmm. of knowing, like, I want to care for these people. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. it's sort of like if you're going to go away somewhere mm -hmm. and, you know, you want to spend that last evening before you go on vacation or away with your family. Yeah. And the, I see that's what Jesus was doing. It's just a very by. intimate moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, so what posture do you think that um, Jesus had towards Peter, even though at first he was bewildered and a little taken aback? I think and just complete total love towards Peter and mm. just being gentle with him because he wasn't understanding. Mm. And I mean, Jesus was not one to, you know, berate his disciples, but at the same point to gently draw him in and, and bring him along. Yeah, so. definitely the de gentleness mm -hmm. over the rebuke. Yeah, yeah. Um, what truths was Jesus believing about himself in this in this narrative? I believe that for himself, he was. I think that this is this is the final moments with mm -hmm. my family, and the truth was that we need to be servants to be able to reach out to others and mm. and to minister to other people. So the way up is down. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, which leads us to the last question is, what is this new way? Which you kind of already summarized, mm -hmm. the way yeah. up is down. Yes. That, um, leading by example, mm -hmm. Jesus did that. And just on a more personal note, mm -hmm. could you maybe share a little bit of why you chose um, Peter and how that relates to your own life? Um, well, sometimes I get a little bewildered by what Jesus is doing in my life. Mm. Um, my wilderness has been love this mm. um, Lent season. And I always thought, well, God loves me. But it wasn't that. It was how to... I love others. Mm. And so it's been teaching me about servanthood. Okay. And interesting. And how I can really love someone by being a servant like Jesus was. So yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Thank you. And I hope this was helpful to everyone watching. And it's just a starting point. We would really encourage you to just <laughs> to do it for yourself. And maybe the character that you choose is different than Debbie's. Mm -hmm. But the whole idea of this process is just for us to engage with the scriptures. And it doesn't come back to us void. Mm -hmm. God has something to say to us today. So I encourage you guys to, to do it for yourself. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Thank you.